So yesterday we, we left off with molecules. Remember we said atoms, elements are made up of atoms, but uh, compounds are made up of molecules because molecules, those were the smallest part of a compound. Now, some really wacky stuff happens because one molecule can stick to another molecule just like that magnet I showed you stick to the other magnet. Yeah. And the more you stick together, the longer it gets. It gets complicated. And in order for them to stick, they have to go through the chemical reactions and stuff like that. Well, there's three chemical reactions that you kind of need to know. Remember the other day when I mentioned metabolism? Remember that? We, we did the poster about um, an, anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions. And I said, if you added all those together, that would equal your metabolism. And I, last night I was thinking, well, how can I show this to these people? And so I researched it, and I thought... I wondered what the hungriest animal on earth was. And here he is, the American pygmy shrew. This guy is only about two inches. Well, check it out. He's only about this long. Wait, what is he? He's a uh, pygmy shrew. And so he's about this long. We have shrews around here like that. But when you see one, keep in mind, these guys, they eat three times their own body weight every day. They only sleep two to three minutes per day. The rest of the time, they're eating. Somebody asked me what they, what they ate. Well, I didn't read it, but I know something about the shrews, and they eat anything. If it's alive, they'll eat it. If it's dead, they'll eat it. If it's certain plants, they'll eat it. They gotta eat, 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 eat. Well, here's the cool thing. Their heart rate is a thousand beats a minute. Insects, spiders, and, and mice. mine is maybe 60. Yours might be 60, maybe a little higher. But these bad boys, they're going 1,000 beats a minute. And so they only live a year because they are constantly on the go and they just burn themselves out. So their metabolism is high, which means they have a lot of chemical reactions going on at one time in their body. I bet if you took their temperature, they would be like really, really, really hot. A lot hotter than we are, okay? But I, I thought I'd show you that because I just thought that was, I thought that was cool. Yeah. They eat insects, spiders, and woodlands. Yeah, they'll eat anything. Anything. Would you eat a spider? You would if your belly was hungry. Yeah. You know what uh, animal was on there that surprised me? I didn't get a chance to read it, but it was the whale, blue whale. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to read it. But they have a lot of chemical reactions. Now, here we go. Three chemical reactions or bonds that you need to know. Three chemical bonds you need to know. Without these, our body can't survive, life would not exist, even in plants, animals, whatever. If it's, got, if it's made up of cells, this stuff is going on. Okay, one is called an ionic bond. And it's called an ionic bond because it makes something called ions. Now, you'll notice it's not written up there, so I want you to write what I'm about to say. It is the strongest chemical bond. We can't break it. It's unbreakable by our bodies. And an example would be salt. So when you, when you uh, eat salt, your body can't break down salt. It can only get rid of it. You ever get sweaty and the, and the sweat is it's salty? I mean, you get so sweaty that it'll dry up in salt crystals on your skin. Or you pee it out. But you can't break it apart because it's, it's a strong bond. Now, check this, this uh, picture out right here. See that pebble at the bottom? That's the metal, sodium, Na. Remember, that's one of those molecules we listed yesterday. So there it is, sitting in sand, so it doesn't melt the whole glass. And then see how green it is in here? That's chlorine gas. That's poison. So if you would take a breath of that, that probably would not be good. If you ate that, that would not be good. You put them together, look what happens. Wow. I mean, if you could hear it, it would be bright, it would be hot, it would sound like it's sizzling, and I wouldn't want to breathe the smoke. But then after the reaction is over, so after the fire goes out, what's left is white salt. And then you could just take it and eat it. That'd be cool. Now, the reason this is happening is because electrons are going from one atom to the next. Remember, anytime an atom moves, it's giving off a party of electricity, and not necessarily electricity, but power. Okay, and it's releasing energy. So that's what that reaction, chemical reaction looks like, and it makes that bond. 
Okay? Now, what is that? When electrons are given away. Now, if I were having a good day, you know, I woke up on the right side of the bed, and I didn't have to spend money on my truck. My truck is still running. I didn't have to uh, do much. I give Jacob five bucks. Now think about that. If somebody gives you something, like five bucks, if somebody gave me money, I'd probably go spend it. Would you go spend it? Put it somewhere? Would you ever give it back? No. What if I come back and say, Jacob, man, my truck broke down. I need my five bucks back. You would, probably, you would probably give it to me, but if you'd spend it, you'd say, duh, man, I don't have any more. I, I spent it. So you get the concept. So one of them is giving electrons away, and the other one is taking them, and it's never going to give it back. Okay? Now, here's the ions. Now, this isn't, this isn't crazy math stuff. This is pretty easy. Here's an ion. An ion is just an atom with an electrical charge. Atom with an electrical charge. Whoa, what's that? Yeah, it's got electrical charge. Gold atom has 79 positive protons. That means it's going to have 79 negative electrons. They're going to cancel each other out, right? That's not an ion. That's just an atom. But when some magic starts happening and it has more positives than it has negatives, then it becomes a positive ion. Check it out. Here's the nucleus. Here's the protons. It's got two protons. They're positive. But look, it only has one electron. Well, one of them cancels the other one out. And look, it's a positive. That's the only thing left over. So it becomes a positive ion. Okay. Now, negative ion, check it out. It has two positives, but it has one, two, three negatives. So two of them are going to cancel these bad boys out, and it's going to be negative. That's all that is. So an ion is a charged atom, or an atom with an electrical charge. Okay, now check out this picture. You don't necessarily have to draw, but I just want to show you. Okay, so there's sodium. Now check this out. This electron likes to do this. This is its job. All day long, every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, every year, forever until eternity, it wants to orbit. It just like does that all the time? That's all it does. It just goes around and around and around. See these? These electrons, all they do is go around and around and around and around. Here's something cool though. If you notice, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It needs one more. It wants eight to be, wants to be happy. Well, look, sodium has one to give. So what's going to happen is sodium, when they get close to each other, this one goes over to here. So now sodium won't have any. And now the brain said, yeah, I'll take it. Because it's easier to get one than it is to get rid of seven. And so now it'll have eight electrons going around and around and around. And that's what I'm going to show you on this picture here when I show you, when I pull it up here. What happens if an electron goes back in the other way? Oh, I'll show you. Okay, see, there's what it looks like. So now that electrons, all they do is orbit this bad boy. This guy's left out in the, in the cold. So now all of a sudden, this one here is positive because it doesn't have, it has more positive. Over here, this one has more negatives. And so remember, positive, negative. They come together. And they're together forever. Forever and ever. You can put water on them, and all it does is dissolve the salt molecule apart from another one. That's all it does. Okay. Have you guys ever watched one of these take off? A rocket? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a space shuttle. And I want you to notice, see this grayish white? grayish white and then you have this orange the orange is coming from the solid rocket booster so on the side of the see the white uh, rockets on the side of the model up there on top of the cabinet once you light them they go off they don't stop that's solid rocket fuel but the big tank the big red tank that they're attached to it has oxygen and hydrogen in them and when you put those together they give off enough energy they throw that 100 ton vehicle up into space that's how powerful they are and so what you see here is just the smoke from the solid rockets. But what you see here is no more than water. So if you were standing here, you'd be soaking wet. Isn't that wild? It looks like smoke, but it's not. It's actually... So I wouldn't be in any harm if I was just standing here, right? I would want to be out here. I wouldn't want to be close because that'd be kind of hot water. But you want to want to be right there. Yeah. That's all it is, is water. Okay. Now, water's formed by this. Covalent bonds. 
Look at that. Sharing electrons. Now, what's not written there is that it's the second strongest bond. Ionic bonds are the, the second strongest bond. Now, we can break these. Human beings can break this. Not a problem. You just add a little electricity. You can do it. But look, there's oxygen. He's kind of a big atom compared to those two little hydrogens. Remember, space shuttle takes, takes hydrogen and oxygen, put us together, and they give a reaction. They get up and they throw that space shuttle way up. Look what happens. Sharing electrons. How do I explain this? Let's say, Jacob, you and I are going to go scuba diving. We got one tank, though. And I like you. So I'm going to share my air with you. So I'm going to, we're going to dive down. We're going to be looking for like gold. And as soon as you, I see you start turning purple, you need oxygen. I'm going to give you the mouthpiece. You're going to take a deep breath. And all of a sudden, I turn purple. And yeah, I'm going to shake it. You see what I mean? That's, that's kind of what it is. So you're giving it, but you're going to get it back. And so those two red dots, those two electrons, they are going to, instead of circling here, they're going to end up doing this. It looks like a, a sideway Mickey Mouse. It looks like Mickey Mouse is laid down. But what they're going to do, remember, it wants eight to be happy. It has six. It doesn't take one, but it takes two. Now it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's happy. Hydrogens are happy. Now what they're doing is the oxygens are going to take the long way around, then they're going to zoom around here, then they're here, and then they're going to go way out here. You see what I mean by sharing? Electrons are going to come out here over hydrogen or oxygen, then they're going to go back. Now, this atom is super huge. It takes a long time for them to get around. So most of the electrons are going to spend most of their time here. Electrons are negative, so this side of the water is going to be negative. But this side over here is going to be positive because most of the electrons are over here. Because this is a big, big, big atom. And this is the main reason of some of the things that we were doing in the lab yesterday, what you noticed. It's because of that we get water properties that we're studying. Okay, last one. The weakest of all the bonds. Test question. The weakest of every one of them is the hydrogen. Our DNA is held together by hydrogen bonds. So your body's got to be able to break your DNA apart so it can copy it. And then it'll stick back together like a magnet. It breaks it. When it needs to put it back together, it'll stick back together and it'll just click in. It's, it's amazing how it works. But this is the weakest one. If you've ever, ever, ever had the fun of doing a belly flop. That's not fun. You're feeling this bond. You can hit the water very hard. You're not going to break it. But your water is going to like kick back because of this bond. Remember, it's a bond. So what's happening is... Remember, positives like to stick to negatives. When they get close, they just go. Well, if you look at the picture, that's moving. You can break yourself. Look at that. What's lining up? Negatives and positives. And so this is making the surface of water. So that way, when you do a belly flop, you hit it. And since they're all like connected, they're holding you. And, it's like concrete. Yeah, and it feels really, really bad. But that's a hydrogen bond, so it's the weak one. And it's, all it is is the attraction of the molecules. Nothing is being given away. They're just like magnets, and they're sticking together, even though it's like, not like magnetism. Okay, any questions? Bam.